What's going on, bros? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the long-awaited, highly anticipated Mimic Brew Answers Your, the viewer questions. All right, so it's Pokemon questions and uh, other stuff. I said send me whatever the heck you want. So yeah, so we got about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes worth of questions here. But uh, everyone who's sending these questions, thank you very much. If you would like to be featured in a future uh, Q&A type video, just any one of my videos or on Instagram, write Q&A and then write a question. Once I get enough, I make a video. Very simple. All right, let's get to it. Dodie Magodi on YouTube asks, which Pokemon would you like to see in Star Wars? Who would you make the, the best Jedi? Who would make the best Jedi, Sith or Droid? Okay, so Jedi, that's easily Lucario, right? Sith, I would say Hisuian Zorark. Okay, right here I have the V-Star universe, Hisuian Zorark. Let's see if I can get that. This thing right here would be scary as hell with a, uh, a, a couple red lightsabers. Tell me I'm wrong. Okay, so Hisuian Zorark, yeah, the Jedi Lucario. Droid, I'm gonna go either Duraludon or uh, Arcaladon. Ar Arcaladon? Arch Arch the new one. The new one that's gonna be in the next set. That one, it's like a giant bridge thing. Yeah, so Droid, one of the one of the Dons. Absolutely. All right, all right, all right. Bailey Justice on YouTube asks, what's your favorite Western anime? I love Avatar The Last Airbender. Okay, so first of all, that's my answer. Avatar, The Last Airbender. Aang, Appa, Korra, Sokka, Z uh, Zuko, Uncle Iroh, The Fire Nation. Um, so, the actual anime itself is a 10 out of 10 all-time classic. And even the live-action adaptation, that is, what is it, on Netflix? One season? That was actually really, really, really good as well. Like, I really loved the live-action adaptation. They didn't go and change too much. They, they stayed true to the way things are. Yeah, so Last Airbender, absolutely. As far as Western animes go, I agree with you. Bailey, absolutely number one, is Last Airbender. All right, Loop Seeker on YouTube. What's up, Loop Seeker? Important question. You playing Shadow of the Erd Tree Brew? Yes, I am. So Elden Ring is potentially the greatest video game ever, like of all time. Uh, yeah, yeah. And its mechanics are actually based off of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which that's one of my favorite games ever. Uh, but the DLC, okay, so the DLC, I've been really busy since the DLC came out, so, you know, the first few days, I, I'm like halfway done. I'm somewhere between like a third and a halfway through the DLC. I'm at Mesmer, I'm at the Mesmer boss battle, and I know that's not actually the final battle, I know, I know. I, I, I watch YouTube, okay, I, I know. Uh, but yeah, I'm probably like halfway through the DLC. It's incredible DLC. Uh, the DLC itself is bigger and more amazing than most entire games, let's be honest. Alright, alright, next question. Brian Caswell. What's up, Brian, on YouTube? So Brian Caswell asks, Do you play or have any intentions to play the Pokemon TCG? So here's the thing. Here's the thing, Brian, is I used to play the Pokemon TCG back in 1999. So I actually had two complete first edition base sets, like complete, except I only have one Charizard. Only one. But I played, everybody in 1999 played the game, okay? So all my first edition base set, all my fossil, all my jungle, and I don't know if I was still playing when Rocket, yeah, I think all, all the first four sets, everything was wrecked. I remember like card shops a couple years later, they wouldn't even give me anything. They're like, your, your first edition base set, Blastoise, Venusaur, everything is wrecked. We don't want it. Or maybe they give me 50 bucks. I don't know. Yeah. But nowadays, no. Now I do pay attention for playability for selling cards. The number one easiest cards to sell on eBay where I sell is uh, playable cards. So I'm always, always paying attention to what's playable and what's going up in value because of that. All right. So now, not one, but three questions from Mads Likes Cardboard on IG and YouTube. So I'll bang all three of these out real quick. What's your day-to-day -day collecting look like? Are you an eBay filter stalker? 
Do you buy collections? Do you just rotate your local LGS? All of the above. So I'm really glad you asked the thing about the eBay stalker because I mean that I mean the filter stalker that is to a T who I used to be. So on my eBay, even now, currently, you go to save searches. I think a lot of people do this. I probably have like 70 or 80 custom saved searches that are just like, oh, Team Rocket, Vintage, Modern, you know, Pokemon, even not Pokemon stuff. So I used to absolutely, especially when I still lived in Seattle, not here in Arizona. So up until, you know, about two or three years ago, I absolutely was going online, buying everything online. Um, and when it comes to Japanese, I still buy a ton of Japanese on eBay from Japanese sellers. But... Since moving to where I live now, and over the last two and a half years, almost everything I buy English raw is in person at one of these million of card shops down here. We got so many card shops in the Phoenix, the Valley area, that now literally I can't even, I think maybe one IR from Paradox Rift back when Paradox Rift came out was the last time I ordered an English card online. Because I just simply put, I don't have to. I Every card other than trophy Pikachu cards I can find within 20 minutes of getting in my truck. So yeah, um, and then I've never bought collections, and the reason I've never really been into collections, because I, I got the OCD, I'm obsessed with like near mint or better and mint cards, and of all the like thousands of cards I have, whether it be for master setting, collecting, selling on eBay, doing whatever I'm doing, you know, just whatever, I just don't want any of the cards to be messed up, jacked, you know, clearly not near mint. And if you're buying collections, a whole bunch of not near mint rec cards are going to somehow enter the fray and get mixed into places. Um, so I just avoid buying out collections, just in general, because one, I'm, I'm pretty specific, I know exactly what I want, yada yada. But two, is because I just, I just don't like even having the chance of buying, you know, under near mint Pokemon cards. So I don't do that. So yeah, basically buy all my, all my stuff in person these days. Alright, another one. How do you track the rise and fall of cards? Are you just tracking TCG player? Is it net? So are you talking raw graded? Are you talking foreign language? So raw, if I'm doing raw cards, just that, because all card shops, pretty much everyone that sells Pokemon cards still goes off a of TCG player. Raw English, I definitely use TCG player first and foremost. Um, but then eBay last sold, especially because I'm an actual eBay seller. I'm always trying to use eBay last sold because that if you're trying to sell a card you want to see what it's going for on the app that you're actually using or the platform you're actually using because tcg player price charting ebay could have you know a difference of five ten percent there are some cards that just simply put sell more on ebay that sell significantly less on tcg player maybe vice versa i don't know and then there's like weird cards that even i don't sell on amazon but you hear about charizard upcs that sell for like twice what they're supposed to if you sell them on amazon like what's that about okay so but for raw i usually do tcg player or ebay last sold for graded i like to use uh, pricecharting.com which is owned by ebay i think ebay owns freaking everybody now uh arizona tcg they do good graded they do re really as long as the card has a lot of submissions uh, uh recorded gradings then arizona tcg is very good it's on the like the cards that only have a handful where arizona tcg prices are a little inflated uh and then ebay last sold for psa or graded cards also if you're trying to actually sell a graded card especially if you're trying to sell it on ebay you definitely the best thing for you to do is check ebay last sold and put your price to where it makes sense for the current listings versus last sold to where you are competitively priced because um, regardless of what TCG player or other apps say, you know, you want to have the most competitive price if you're trying to flip your card on your platform that you're actually selling on. Okay, and then, uh, oh, and then Japanese use Pokedata. Pokedata is really good for Japanese cards and eBay last sold. So usually, you know, I sell a lot of Japanese too. So I'll use eBay last sold or, and or Pokedata. Um, pretty much everywhere. There's a lot of Japanese places that try to do Japanese price charting and it's not not too good But Pokedata is pretty good uh, And then yeah, is this your pool? No, it's my parents pool. Okay, my parents live in Scottsdale. I live in Tempe. They're gone for the summer So uh, yeah, I can go over and swim in their pool whenever I want <laughs> All right Warriors Dynasty part 275 on YouTube did Michael Jackson touch you in any way? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, he did. Um, but only emotionally. Only, 
only emotionally, okay? So the 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 movie uh, from the early '90s with the Orca, Free Free Willy, Keiko the Orca. There's a Michael Jackson song that is just so good, and it's in that Free Willy song, like in the beginning and in the end. Um, so that Michael Jackson song from the movie Free Willy absolutely touched me. <laughs> All right, so Johnny McCrary six seven zero one on YouTube. What is the card you own the most of? So I actually, just coincidentally, I answered this in my last video. Uh, it's Gloom from Ruler of the Black Flame. So for whatever reason, Gloom has always been since 1999, my favorite stage one Pokemon. And when Ruler of the Black, came, uh, Black <laughs> Ruler of the Black Flame came out, uh, the card was so dirt cheap compared to other stuff. Um, so I just bought like 35 or 40 of them, something like that. And even that was like barely a hundred something bucks. So yeah, I own like 35 or 40 uh, glooms and it's cool. Great card. All right. Sugar FR 33 or sugar free on YouTube. What do I do with my bulk after sorting everything? This is probably a question a lot of people want to know about. What do I do with my bulk? All right. So what do I do with my bulk? You know, after essentially sorting everything, I'm talking like 15 to 20 thousand cards. So for me personally, I dent away at my bulk slowly, but not so surely just by giving away. I'll shove like four cards in one sleeve and I give away a lot of cards with every order on my eBay store, not just Pokemon cards. I do have a little, whole little process to try to get positive feedback. But part of that is at least four or five bulk Pokemon cards. You're getting, it doesn't matter what you order from me, you're going to get a little bit of my bulk for sure. Um, but obviously it would take forever to get rid of all your bulk just by giving away three or four per order on eBay. Um, so, there are LGSs or places that have giant like $20,000 card counting machines. And the reason that they do that is because they end up, you know, it costs a lot of money, but in theory, if you sell enough bulk on TCG Player like a million years later, it ends up paying for itself, right? So, uh, actually, this afternoon, fellow YouTuber, Polka Mart USA, go check him out, guys. I'm gonna put his thing on. I, uh, so because I'm so area, I love area familiarization, knowing every place you could possibly buy Pokemon cards in your area, I'll notice if a new Pokemon card shop pops up. That happened today, a new little pin popped up, and I go to check it out. It turns out that this new place called Phoenix Cards in, you know, in the valley, uh, in, in Phoenix, uh, is owned by Pokemart USA on Instagram and on YouTube. So I actually met him today, we had a little conversation. Sounds like he's friends with Nostalgianomics. What's up, Alex? I met your buddy today, Alex. <laughs> All right, so that guy, though, has a card counter machine. And right as you walk in the door, hey, we'll buy your bulk. And it, the price is actually, it was like five bucks for every, five, I don't know. It, it, the price, it wasn't bad. Like, if you're trying to get rid of your bulk and you actually want to get compensated for it, find an LGS that has a giant card counting machine because they'll gladly pay you for it and then they'll sell the bulk on TCG Player. There you go, sugar free. Find someone with a card card machine or drop 20 grand on your own and then, oof. All right, SD Collectibles on IG. Everyone knows this guy, what's up, SDC? All right, what advice would you give to your 17-year-old self? I have no idea where I heard this. I, I don't remember. Somebody who isn't me, who's much smarter and uh, much more articulate with the words came up with this, but I heard it and it stuck with me. Are you ready? Here it is. The key to happiness is not comparing yourself to others. Just don't compare yourself to others and apparently you'll be you'll be so super happy. So that that, that is, you know, and obviously when we're adolescents growing up, we're always comparing, we're always blah blah blah, social media, this and that, everyone else's life is perfect except for mine, yada yada yada. Just remember the key to happiness is not comparing yourself to others. All right, there's that. Joey Schmidt on IG. At the end of Star Wars, another Star Wars question. Episode 9. Ooh, there's a controversial one. On a scale of 1 to 10, how hyped were you when Rey said she was a Skywalker? Okay, so, first of all, the new series that literally just ended, like yesterday, uh, The Acolyte on Disney+. Plus. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That show just so, it, one, it's just as a show, when it comes to being a television show, it's absolutely terrible, just in theory, at the things it takes to be a complete, well put together show, horrible. But that show just shits on so much Star Wars lore, 
they do things where like people aren't even born yet and then they just show up and this the, it's it's oh god i don't even care about episode nine the stuff that happened in episode nine and like say the show book of boba fett which is terrible those seem totally fine compared to how low the new low is that acolyte if that i don't even know what to call it if that uh i guess a tv show uh gets a season two i whew, i'm just gonna cancel my freaking disney plus until uh shogun comes back <laughs> all right so yeah uh it, oh god but yeah ray being a skywalker or a, who cares i don't i don't even care anymore it's so everything's so bad it's hard to even care all right here we go I got last two questions. Richie two by four YouTube. Is Evie coming back from the moon? So probably not. Probably not. Okay. So I mean, to be honest, I see I see Evie in the near future coming back down to about fifty dollars. Bear in mind the PSA ten is like three hundred and fifty dollars. You know, but I could see eBay coming back down to fifty. And then like six months from now, it goes back up to 70, 80, and it lands somewhere, you know, between 50 and $100 long term. But in the near future, over the next week or two, I see EV coming, coming back down, come back down to 50 for us, EV, just for a couple months, please. I already got one. I mean, I paid 50 for mine. I literally paid 50 right before it. All right. And then probably, all right. So last question today. Uh, Richie 2x4 asked potentially the easiest question of the day. Uh, Jinx or Low Punny? Low Punny, no question. Alright guys, that's all I got. Like, comment, and subscribe. Deuces!